Girl here with another vintage haul from the flea market. But before I get started, I wanted to do a shout out to Tanya of Thrifty Treasures. Um, if you're not watching your, her videos, they're very entertaining and she always buys such cute things. I just uh, love seeing what she picks up. And uh, I won her giveaway that she did for reaching 2,000 subscribers and the prize was a, a pickle-shaped Christmas ornament, which I don't have here with me, but um, I did win it and I received it, but she also sent a little bonus of this owl pendant made of brass and um, I just thought that was a very, very thoughtful thing for her to do because I have picked up a number of these, uh, of the vintage versions of these. Um, this one might be vintage too, actually, but um, the mid-century, you know, the 1960s ones uh, like this. I've bought and sold a number of them and shown them on haul videos. And uh, so she knew that I liked little owls and she gave me one. So this one is for me to wear and I'm wearing it. So thank you, Tanya. Um, so anyway, I had a really fun day at the flea market, such beautiful weather, and um, I'm going to sh show you the jewelry first. And this is a really, just a gorgeous, I believe it's silver plate, it's, it's very heavy. I haven't tested it or anything, I'm sure it's not sterling, but anyway. Um, just, uh, I really like the look of this, and this is by Bergere, B-E-R-G-E-R-E, -E -E, which is a good maker. The only issue is the clasp, it's a tongue clasp, and it's got, um, there I got it, it's the little um, prong that sticks up on the, is, is snapped off, but it, it does still, um, clasps just fine, but you just kind of have to get your fingernail down in there to open it. That's the only issue with it, so I got that for uh, $9, I believe. And I'm not sure, I haven't researched it, but I think I'll do okay on that. And then I got another one of these Persian hand-painted, it's uh, painted on Mother of Pearl pendant. Probably silver around it, I haven't tested it. Uh, the <laughs> chain is a mess, it's got a big knot in it and it's all tarnished, but I'll clean that up. Uh, I paid $3 for this and I've sold a number of these. They're, they seem to be popular and they do really well and I'll I forget what I sell them for, but more than three, like probably in the $20 range, I think. This one uh, is not missing any paint, which is a plus because that paint's kind of fragile and you often find it with losses. So I was happy to find that. And I got this smoky quartz and sterling silver ring. And that was $15. Oh, it's nice silver work anyway. Got this wreath brooch uh, with rhinestones in it for three dollars. None of the stones are missing, thank goodness. Uh, just thought it was particularly nice metal work. That's something I'm really looking for these days is like, you know, nice crisp design with lots of detail. And uh, this does have a mark on it. It is um, LJM, which sounds familiar. It sounds like I ought to know what it is, but I've forgotten. And I got this wooden, and I think this is probably just plastic. Um, it's, it's like imitation celluloid, and celluloid is imitation ivory. But anyway, um, has a nice look to it. And that was, I think, uh, three, $3, I think I paid for that. And, oh yeah, oh this isn't jewelry, but I got this from the same dealer. It's a glass buckle, and this is 1930s, I'm sure. Um, it is marked Czechoslovakia. I've just never seen a glass buckle. I just thought that was the coolest thing. I have another 1930s uh, buckle that's celluloid, and I'll probably put those two things together and sell them. And this is a really neat piece. This is um, Scrimshaw. And it's a really nice example. And if you look at the back, 
I'm pretty sure this is Victorian because number one, it has a C clasp, which is not not a deal maker, but it is indicative that it could be older. But the length of the pen, see how long that pen is, how it sticks out beyond the edge of the brooch, that usually indicates a Victorian. And then the third thing is it has a tube hinge. That's this hinge right here. See how long, how wide that hinge is. That's another. And and the design is just it looks Victorian. So um, yeah, and I did pay ten dollars for that. I paid up for it, but I just thought it was so pretty. Um, I think. Yep, that's all the jewelry. Um, next, I'm going to show you a few knives. I found some pocket knives for the first time in a while. And uh, this one is a little no-name knife, but I like the color, the red, on it. It's in reasonably good shape once I clean it up. Um, and that was $3. And then this is a um, colonial knife. And it's got uh, three blades. Well, I won't pull them out of that, but it's got three blades, which is nice. And it's a faux horn handle. None of these are super valuable. Maybe, you know, in the $15 to $20 range. And then this is an Imperial, which is was a really, really popular knife brand from Providence, Rhode Island. has that nice um, pearly cracked ice celluloid handle. And this one is a two-blade one and uh, paid four dollars a piece, I think. Four or five dollars a piece for the knives. And then from that same, yeah, it was ten dollars for the two knives and for this, which is a nice little stiff brush. Um, I just like it because it's old, has a wooden handle, and I think this will be um, really useful for cleaning things like knives and things that you need to get in and scrub them, but you don't want to scratch them. Okay, that is it for the knives. Uh, next, I got a huge haul of art glass paperweights. And I got five paperweights for $60. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. My cart that I used at the flea market, the wheel fell off like the day before. And I was bringing home groceries with my husband, so it was fun getting that home. But anyway, it was not usable, and I didn't have time to get another one. So I went to the flea market with my great big bag, and I thought, well, I'll just try not to buy anything heavy. So the first thing I buy is five paperweights. The next thing I buy is another paperweight. Then I buy two books, and then I bought a great big box. And you'll see all this in a minute. And um, by then, it was so heavy I could barely cover it. I could barely carry it. But, um, and I remember there was somebody at the flea market that usually sells baskets. So I headed for there, and thank goodness she had some rolling carts. Same price as what I would have paid anyway, so I, I bought one there. I was happy. I could fill it up. So anyway, let me show you the uh, paperweights. This one is pink, and then it has like this iridescent gold and yellow kind of glittery stuff. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but... This one is, this one is signed, um, it looks like it says maybe F Friend or something like that, 87 J Friend, I'll have to look that up, it sounds familiar, I'm probably saying it wrong. So that was one, this is the second one, and I believe this one is not signed, but it's really pretty. And they're all in good condition. And this one is um, signed. Where's the name? Um, John McPherson, 83. I just thought this one was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I have looked this one up. Um, his stuff doesn't. His glass doesn't go for huge amounts of money, but you know I won't lose money. I'll make a little profit on that. And this one, and this one has a paper label on it that says Konst Glashjian Urschelt. Have not looked that up. 
I'm thinking, um, maybe Polish? I know I've gotten a lot of really nice glass from Poland. And then the last of the, of the lot that I bought is this gorgeous Melifiori. And this one still has the Murano label on it, which is good. And uh, these, this will sell probably for um, know, somewhere between $50 and $75, I think. So that'll work out. And then I bought another uh, glass paperweight from somebody else. This cute little elephant with his trunk up. That's good luck. And uh, that one says $8, but I paid $7. Seven dollars for him. That's that. Um, next thing is this. I not. Sh I think it's for squeezing lemon into tea. You squeeze it and it catches the seeds. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's some kind of strainer, and it the little holes say hawthorn. And then on the back it says. Um, oh, can't quite read that. Manning, Bowman and Company, patented October 11th, 1892. So that's kind of fun. I think it's, I don't know if it's silver plate. Part of it's silver plate, I think. Uh, I paid three dollars for that. And I got a pair of, I think that these are World War I era binoculars. Got these things that slide on them. Um, they do work, all the glass is still in place, and they focus. I think they, um, almost certainly, they had leather over the brass part. But I have sold these before for, oh, years ago, when I didn't even know what I was doing. I sold a pair, I think, for 60 or $70. And I saw another pair at the flea market, just like these, that was uh, for sale for $60. And these I paid 10 for, so I was happy about them. See what else do I have? <laughs> I bought this aluminum ice bucket. This is a mid-century kind of hammered looking, and it is made by Nasco, Italy. It, it needs cleaning up. This looks awful, but this is just grunge that's going to clean right off. And it's just really, it's dirty. It's a little beat up, <laughs> but I only paid a dollar for it. It's on the, on a dollar table. But these don't sell for a whole lot. Um, I'm hoping maybe I can get 18. Twenty dollars for it once it's cleaned up. Depends on how it looks. Um, I got this cup, which is for reading tea leaves. I think it says "cup of knowledge." Cup of knowledge. I've seen these before. I never bought one before though, but they're made in Japan. They just say Japan on them. I'm not sure exactly when. But I just thought it was cute. I have not looked that up. I don't think they sell for very much. I paid five dollars for that. I got three antique padlocks. This one is a Corbin. This one is a Miloco. And this one is a frame. I've sold frame ones before. These are pretty old. I'd say these are antique, you know, very early 20th century, possibly even earlier. They're all, um, they open with keys, which unfortunately I don't have any keys for them. So they're just for show. But I paid $5 for the lot of those three. I got a, um, I guess it's a coffee set. I don't, it's, this is kind of big to be a chocolate pot. So I think it's a coffee pot, um, but this is Nippon, which is Japan between 1891 and 1923 or something like that. It's right around that era. I forget the exact years, but anyway, it's when imports had to be marked with the country of origin, but they used Nippon for Japan, and then later they ruled that they had to say Japan and not Nippon. So. That's how you date those. And it's just, it's very Edwardian looking with the garlands and swags and the gold. And I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And there's the, I think it's a, I want to say a coffee pot, like for serving 
Um, I don't know, these are the little cups that go with it. Little cups and saucers. And I have three cups and three saucers. So I'm sure there was a fourth at one time. Great sadness that I don't have all four. But I paid $15 for the whole set. So I think that was reasonable. Uh, let's see. I got a couple of antique books. They look like this. And these are the fronts. And I paid um, $5 a piece for these. They're in really good condition. Well, pretty good condition. They do have some spotting discoloration. But anyway, they're old, 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 old. These date, one date's from, uh, this one's 1822, and the other one, I believe, is 1821. So, those are almost 200 years old. <laughs> those are some old books. Uh, I don't know what those will sell for. I, I usually get a pretty penny for the, for the nice old books. You know, I don't know, maybe for the set of them, $75, something like that. I'll have to research. I don't know that the book itself is anything special. I got another uh, Italian um, Florentine box. This one's a little stamp box, and it says, it's marked right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I think it's marked Made in Italy right there. But I thought this was kind of neat because it has these postage stamps on the front that have um, uh, cancellation, you know, stamps on them. What do you call them? Uh, I'm blanking on the word. But anyway, they're dated. 1951, 1956, and 1953, I think. Anyway, and one of them is Princess Grace. So I just thought that was kind of cute. And that was $5. Oh, there's another stamp in here. <laughs> anyway, uh, $5 for that. And, oh, let's see. This was one of the cooler things I bought. It's a tea caddy. It's really nice wood and then you open it up it's got the little compartments for the tea and uh, I, I think maybe that's a slot for, um, for a spoon. It's kind of dirty. I'll have to be careful cleaning it because it looks pretty fragile but it's got a lock and a key that works and um, it's in pretty good condition. Anyway, I paid $20 for that. I think this is pretty old. I think it's, you know, possibly a 19th century. I don't really know what I can sell that for. And let's see, I'll show you. <laughs> I'm looking at my couch. It's funny. Uh, this is the latest rug. I may have already shown you this one because I've been working on it for a long time. Taken forever. And nothing. She's all calm for once. Do you want to come? Muffins, we've been having some issues with muffins. She's been um, having litter box issues. And I uh, finally took her to the vet and talked over with the, the vet, checked her over to make sure there was nothing wrong with her. And uh, we have kind of determined that she's doing it because of stress and we think she's doing it because there's cats in the backyard. Cat, cats stroll through our backyard all the time and she gets really upset about it and she's been kind of doing her business by the front and back doors so we think she's kind of trying to announce to the other cats that this is her house. Um, anyway, it's not been pleasant. Uh, so the vet recommended this stuff called Feel Away which is a hormone that lactating female cats um, emit, and it helps their kittens to form bonds with each other. And hi, yes, I'm talking about you. And um, stay close. Hi, come on. And uh, if it, they've made a synthetic version of it, and uh, you put it in like a little diffuser, like a room freshener thing that you plug in. And it's supposed to uh, make cats feel calm and safe and not hate other cats as much. 
it uh, really was designed for multi-cat households where the cats don't get along. But the vet said she thought it might um, make her calmer about other cats. And, um, and we're doing some other things with litter boxes, you know, where we put them and stuff like that. So, so far, so good. She's been really good for a few days now. So, yeah. Oh, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. But she seems a little more mellow. And she's not spending, she would spend all day sitting looking out the window, waiting for another cat to show up so she could have a fit. And um, she's not been doing that as much, so. Hopefully, she'll straighten up. I hope so. Because it's not that much fun when they don't use the litter box. All right, that's it. That's probably more information than you wanted. Uh, all of this stuff is or soon will be for sale in my Etsy shop, vintagedazzle.etsy.com. Please like this video, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I would appreciate it a lot, and I will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.